You're listening to Conferences Online Allergy from Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics in Kansas City, Missouri. Today is June 25, 2012, and I'm your host, Dr. Jay Portnoy. Our topic today, Food Protein-Induced Enterocolitis Syndrome. Our presenter is Dr. Mark Needles. He's a pediatric resident at Children's Mercy Hospitals and Clinics. Needles is a first year uh, resident who's rotating with us this month and completing his rotation. And he's going to talk to us very briefly about food protein induced intercolitis syndrome. Which is quite a mouthful, actually. Now, here's the keyboard. And here's the wireless mouse. So, welcome to Conference with Online Allergy. Yeah, nice to meet you all. So, just use the arrows. So um, I'm doing my presentation on food protein-induced enterocolitis syndrome. And I'll just refer to this as FPIES as the abbreviation. Uh, the uh, FPIES is a non-IgE-mediated gastrointestinal uh, uh, food hypersensitivity thought maybe to be T-cell-mediated. Patients are often uh, formula-fed infants uh, presenting before six months old. The pathophysiology is thought to be possibly from ingestion of uh, the food allergens causing local inflammation and increasing intestinal permeability that result in fluid shifts causing vomiting, dehydration, and lethargy. Um, since previously endoscopies of these patients have showed diffuse colitis with variable degrees of ileal involvement, uh, there may be a mechanism of inflammation related to activation of peripheral mononuclear cells causing a cascade of pro-inflammatory changes. There's a slight male uh, predominance of FPIs, a little over 50% of these patients. 30% uh, have a chance of developing atopic dermatitis, atopic disease, mainly atopic dermatitis, and 25 to 65% of these patients, and up to 20% having asthma or allergic rhinitis. Family history of atopic disease can be between 40 to 60% of these patients, or having a family history of food allergy in 20%. The clinical history consists of patients presenting usually one to five hours after the intake of an offender, uh, most often cow, soy, or solid foods, most often rice. And then these patients have repetitive symptoms of emesis and diarrhea that lead quickly to dehydration and lethargy. FIs can be on a differential for patients with these symptoms, especially if there's a recurrence of the symptoms hours after the reintroduction of particular foods or offenders. May see hypotension in an elevated white count, the left shift, uh, making it particularly difficult to differentiate from sepsis. But the clinical history won't have beavers or sick contacts like sepsis, and usually patients with FPIs will, uh, will improve with just rehydration alone. Having acute vomiting and diarrhea can also be seen with anaphylaxis, but unlike the uh, IgE-mediated symptoms, as you know, uh, that present within 30 minutes or up to two hours after the ingestion of the offender. FPI typically begins hours after, with really the first symptom usually being emesis within one to three hours. And they don't have the multi-organ involvement, such as skin changes, flushing or highs, or even respiratory symptoms, such as wheezing or coughing, um, seen with anaphylaxis. In terms of other non-IgE-mediated um, uh, gastrointestinal food hypersensitivities, uh, FPI kind of represents the um, uh, severe end of the spectrum with the uh, food protein-induced proctocolitis being the least severe and FPI being the most severe and uh, enteropathy being the uh, in-between. Proctocolitis is often benign, transient, seen in infants in the first few months of life that present with blood-streaked stools, but otherwise they're well-appearing. Over 50% of those patients are exclusively breastfed and breast milk exclusively breastfeeding in FPIs tends to be a protective effect against the diagnosis of FPIs. Enteropathy, um, more severe than proctocolitis, and can present with intermittent emesis, diarrhea, and even failure to thrive that can make it uh, appear similar to FPIs. Like FPIs, it can also have some anemia and hypolipidemia um, on laboratory data, but unlike FPIs, uh, no, you don't typically see acidemia or methemoglobinemia, which are really a uh, unique features to a severe forms of FPIs that I'll touch base on in a little bit. 
the diagnosis of F. pies is made clinically, and there's no need to have endoscopies or biopsies to be performed. Over 90% of these patients have negative skin prick tests, and a majority have uh, undetectable food-specific IgEs at, at diagnosis. Around 20% may have positive food-specific IgEs at time of diagnosis or later in life. Typically, the onset is during early infancy for the diagnosis of F. pies in one to three months old. May see as late as a year of age, especially as solid foods uh, that um, are typically introduced at four to seven months old, or if there's a delayed introduction to cow's milk or soy. Um, it's rare to develop after a year of age, um, but children with, and adults can present with F. pies to fish and shellfish later in life. Uh, oral food challenges can be performed if there's an uncertain clinical history, um, but often are performed mainly for uh, to see if there's a resolution to the diagnosis uh, before reintroduction later in life. Triggers, as I mentioned earlier, often cow's milk or soy. Uh, several studies showing 50% actually react to both of these. And it's rare to have either exclusively in breastfed infants. Solid foods, uh, most often being rice, which is mainly hypoallergenic, is an interesting feature to F pies. But other foods include oats, barley, chicken, turkey, egg whites, fruit protein, fish, and mollusks can be uh, uh, factors as well. Having a history of F pies to one grain can give a 50% chance of developing to other grains as well. The clinical history may include acute or chronic symptoms of F pies. Probably easier to identify are the acute symptoms that, um, based on clinical history, you'll identify intermittent food ingestion or a reintroduction of food into the diet and presenting with those symptoms. Chronic symptoms are a little more difficult, especially if there's a daily ingestion and uh, it, the food is a staple to their diet, such as an infant on cow or soy formula. Both uh, features usually have the infants having some sort of lethargy, dehydration, or abdominal distension at presentation, where 75% appear acutely ill and 15% need uh, hospitalization. With the acute symptoms, often uh, emesis occurs within one to three hours after the offender is given, and uh, probably the most consistent feature. Diarrhea can be seen within two to 10 hours. Really, the mean is five hours that is post the intake, but may not be seen all the time. Um, having stools uh, is important to understand that if they are present, checking for uh, frank or occult blood, mucus, leukocytes, and eosinophils um, can be suggestive of the diagnosis. Um, also, finding increased carb content can be noted. Um, as I mentioned earlier, both metabolic acidosis and methemoglobinemia can be seen with severe reactions and thought to be secondary to severe intestinal inflammation uh, from uh, reduced uh, catalase activity causing increased nitrites. Um, oral food challenge can be performed for uncertain clinical history or before reintroduction of foods later in life. Over 50% of patients with a positive challenge require treatment with IV fluids and steroids, so it's very important before performing this challenge to make sure that it is a physician-supervised uh, study. The uh, protocol involves having IV access obtained if immediate fluids need to be given and obtaining baseline uh, uh, vitals and peripheral neutrophil count. The first, starting with a gradual introduction of over an hour of three small but equally uh, doses of the food protein, and then uh, if no reaction within two to three hours, this is followed by an age-appropriate dose, and then followed by several hours of observation. If needed, fluid resuscitation with uh, 20 mils per kg, uh, normal saline boluses, or steroids uh, is especially severe can be given. Uh, severe react reactions would include repetitive emesis, profuse diarrhea, lethargy, hypotension, or hypothermia. Epinephrine may be given for shock or hypotension, but it won't reduce the uh, cell-mediated intestinal inflammation that's contributing to the symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea. There's debate on when to repeat the oral food challenge uh, after testing positive. A uh, conservative approach would be to repeat every 18 to 24 months in patients without recent reactions. A more aggressive uh, approach has been suggested 
uh, that we're feeding 12 months at 12 months old for cow's milk FIs and between six and eight months for soy milk FIs. It may seem that it takes longer for cow's milk FIs to resolve than soy. Uh, there was a Korean study that I read that uh, studied 27 infants with cow's milk FIs, and that by 10 months old, 64% tolerated uh, cow's milk and 92% tolerated soy. Treatment, the mainstay of treatment is the avoidance of the trigger of food. Uh, if uh, patients can't be exclusively breastfed, the first step would be to switch to a casein um, high uh, hydrosylated based formula, as frequently these patients have both cow and soy FIs. For the chronic symptoms, they should improve within uh, three to ten days after switching to the new formula. A third of patients with cow's milk or soy FIs develop solid food FIs. Uh, especially for rice or other grains being the most common. Some doctors actually promote uh, introduction of yellow fruit and vegetables rather than cereals at, eight, at six months old, and at a higher rate of reactions with multiple foods. Infants may benefit from avoiding grains, uh, legumes, and poultry, at least for the first year of life, where that window of developing FPIs is at its peak. Um, as described on the last slide, um, that it's, for, it's best for a physician-supervised uh, reintroduction of the food to be performed um, at a year of age at the earliest. If they tolerate one food from each high-risk group, such as soy from legumes, chicken from poultry, or oat from grains, uh, this would increase the probability of tolerance to other foods in the same group. Typically, these patients outgrow uh, the diagnosis by school age. Um, authors from the uh, Annals of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology article that I read um, showed that in their population, 60% of their patients uh, with cow's milk FPIs resolved by three years old. And then a different Israeli study supported this with 90% resolving at three years old. And even more reassuring, the Korean study I mentioned earlier had their patients over 60% resolving by 10 months old. There's not much data on the resolution of solid food FPIs. Um, the same article from the uh, Annals of uh, Allergy Immunology uh, reported two-thirds of the vegetable FPIs and the oat FPIs resolved by three years old, but only 40% uh, of the rice FPIs resolved by this age. In summary, in summary um, uh, FPIs is a non-IgE-mediated uh, gastrointestinal food hypersensitivity uh, seen often early infancy but rarely diagnosed after a year of age. Um, symptoms are hours after the intake of cow, soy, or solids, mainly rice, uh, being the most common, and it's really a clinical diagnosis. Treatment is avoiding the offender till at least repeating the oral food challenge at 12 months at the earliest. Uh, typically, these patients outgrow at around school age, but maybe longer for the solid food FPIs, especially rice or positive food-specific IgE antibodies. Great. Did you get to see an FI patient this one? Yes, I did. It was interesting. Great. And new workup or uh No, it was uh, a, it was a uh, no diagnosis okay. and they came in for a follow up. Thank you. Right. Well thank you so much, Dr. Needles. Appreciate it. Okay. This has been an ACAAI production. To learn more about Conferences Online Allergy or the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, go to www.acaai.org. See you next time. <laughs>